You're listening to Errol Parker and Clancy Overall, editors of the Batuta Advocate on Desert Rock FM. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. You are listening to Desert Rock FM 96.5 with Clancy Overall and Errol Parker, editors of the Batuta Advocate, recording live here from Koala Studios on Koala Street in downtown Batuta. Now, first things first, you might have heard us on Triple J Hack this week. Yeah, we spoke to Tom Tilly on his radio show about a few things. He wouldn't let us do it live, but it was uh, pre-recorded and he cut out all the best parts of the interview. Yeah, that was disappointing, but nevertheless, we wouldn't have been able to meet this week's guest if we didn't make the trip down to Hack. That's right. The bloke we ran into uh, came with a glowing reference from the male meme from Mudgee. Tilly basically told us that this bloke was hostile and combative during uh, interviews and that we should try and steer clear of him. So naturally, we had to uh, track him down just to prove to these public servants that we can do what they do at a better standard. Yes, if you've ever been to a nightclub in the wider Diamantina Basin, chances are you've gotten down to a song that today's guest has either written or produced. He's a stalwart of the Australian dance music scene in Batuta and right across Australia. His body of work speaks for itself, it does. And before we reveal who it is, let's uh, take a look at a few stories we've done in the past on that dark, depraved world of music in Australia and music media in general. Starting off with the story we broke earlier this week regarding the political slant uh, shown by the aforementioned youth music broadcaster Triple J. Quite possibly the reason we got the call up from Tilly this week, wouldn't you say, Errol? Indeed, Clancy. Uh, The headline we published goes as follows. ABC to iron out left-wing bias by adding Caleb Bond to the Triple J breakfast show. Now, for those playing at home who don't know who Caleb Bond is, Caleb Bond is the controversial conservative boy columnist for the Daily Telegraph and the Advertiser down there in Adelaide. And uh, he's set to join Triple J later this month as a part of their campaign to right in their left-wing bias. The new formatting, which was made mandatory under a federal government funding program, uh, has a goal of making the ABC more approachable to Australians from all walks of life, including those who have a non-conforming opinion about refugees, immigrants and other minorities. Now, obviously, the millennial readers were divided by these revelations that, of course, only the Batuta advocate had the balls to break. And the divisiveness of this actual story was evident in the comments. Justin Marburg from uh, Sydney says, Can you fix the political bias in the music they play? I want to hear more future bass music that also highlights the societal benefits of Judeo-Christian values. That's a good point, Justin. We'll be sure to pass that on to Triple J. Rob Michael from Taree says, Caleb is exactly who I picture should be voting for the Liberals. Aside from age, he's white, privileged, happy with the status quo, lacking experience and drop-dead dull. Well, it sounds like Rob's got it in for, uh, for, uh, for Caleb and the, and the Liberals in general. Now, he can talk about the detachment of the Gen Y media commentators till the cows come home, Clancy. Be they Alan Jones, protégés like Caleb or full-blown communists like our mate Tom Tilly. But it's quite clear that the grittier and more working class the contributors to Australia's music scene are, the seldom they're covered in publications outside ours. And that brings us to the next headline. It's an article about a young musician that may be an acquaintance of today's guest. Uh, Tell us a little bit more about this bloke, Clancy. Well, the headline goes, Aussie hip-hop artist retires after running out of words that rhyme with beer and mates. A notorious Aussie hip-hop artist from the Diamantina Shire has retired today after running out of words that rhyme with his favourite things. The 33-year-old MC Bloke Wars announced his retirement, effective immediately, over a vertical Facebook video where he spoke about how sick he was of fakers in the game and how he was always limited because Radioheads didn't respect skip-hop as a true art form. Speaking in third person to the camera, the artist colloquially known as Bloke Dub went on to speak about how the industry has been trying to block out bloke dub for years and he feels his style is suffering from all the outside stress. I'm out of energy, he said. Too many haters and fake cunts in the game trying to talk shit. Yeah, it's a very common scenario as uh, evident in the comments under the article. Uh, Gavin McMullen from Griffith, uh, he wrote, Damn, was looking really forward to his next album on the struggles of growing up as a white kid in a middle-class suburban family. Well, Gavin, that makes one of us. Now, that comment from Gavin brings us to our next guest. He's not a rapper like MC Bloke Wars. He's more of a singer. And not necessarily from a small town either. 
Uh, he does tour extensively throughout Australia and could easily be associated with the greater Aussie hip-hop music scene. Most definitely, he's an icon of Australia's music scene at this moment, both metaphorically and physically. He's a producer, singer, songwriter and a big figure in the underground party scene. We met him a couple of years ago at our book launch in Canberra at Parliament House and now, due to our newfound rivalry with Triple J, we've decided to do a better job of interviewing him than Ben and Liam did. Now, listeners, please be advised that the next part of our podcast may involve flagrant references to recreational drug use and New South Wales grade cricket as we introduce the failed state of Sydney's favourite son, Joyride. Don Joyride? Joyride, Mr Ride? Yeah, Mr Ride will play. Mr Ride, thanks for for joining us today, mate. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Now, first up, uh, Joyride, one thing we want to know is what happened... Uh, During your harsh middle class upbringing, yeah, it seems more likely that you would have ended up in uh, in in rock and roll, but (laughs) somehow you found your your way to uh, Aussie hip hop. Well, it's a very broad question. What happened? You know, I've I've actually tried to suppress a lot of that trauma of growing up in a majority white neighbourhood in the inner west of Sydney. Yeah, Yeah. you know, Um, I guess you know the the suppression of of those traumas of you know. the the boring normality of it all i think i think boredom is a type of trauma that doesn't get discussed enough yeah um you know and and out of out of that grows flowers yeah you were the flower in the boring concrete yeah Yeah. of concord yeah yeah when uh everyone else went on to become tradies and uh office people i decided i don't want a job yeah i want to do what i want did anyone become professional sports stars Everyone always knows professional sports stars, but everyone always thinks that the ones that they know are more famous than they actually are. You know, like, you know a guy who's, who played jersey flag for the Bears and yeah. surely everyone must know who Ryan Dempsey is, you know? <laughs> he was earmarked for the Storm until he did his knee playing at North Sydney Oval. Yeah. 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 I think that's... <laughs> Matt the Hendrick, that, those kind of types. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know you can you can really become a local hero if you can pass both ways. Are you a local hero? Um, back in the you know the harsh kind of uh, grey collar suburb you came from. <laughs> oh look, there aren't there aren't too many heroes coming out of Concord. I wouldn't want to claim it myself. I'd be happy to hear it if someone else said it, and uh, and probably play it down a bit. Yeah. But um, you know I, I don't I don't think I'd be classed a hero, n- not least at my uh, Catholic school that I went to who. Uh, so, so the school I went to, Catholic school, they've got this like wall of former students who went on to do great things. Yep. So you've got uh, Jay Ford, used to ride Black Caviar, the jockey. Mm-hmm. Um, He's a great horse driver. Yeah, yeah, great yeah. horse driver. Uh, John Brogdon, his photo's still up somehow, but I can't get a Guernsey. That, yeah, that's, yeah. That, that's a bit of a... That's tough. Yeah. yeah. So what happened? What made you decide to be a musician? Was it Limp Biscuit? Uh, partly, yep. partly. Um, yeah, it was just you know when when you find something you're good at, you you stick with it, especially when yeah. there aren't too many other things to choose from in terms of talent. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like my hand was forced. Yeah. Um, you know, just kind of end up running at it. Limp Bizkit did play a big part in it. Well, they're, they're actually touring Australia at the moment, aren't they? I wouldn't know. I've already seen them. I saw them in 2001. I'd know. Uh, the big day out. You'd know. Yeah. <laughs> You're going? Yeah. You get yeah. your, uh, you get your break stuff. Love break yeah. stuff. Now, music is one of the few industries where in Australia where everyone around you, including people possibly higher up than you, are encouraging you to get um, inebriated and get yourself fucked up. How do you deal with promoters leaving drugs and booze in the green room with a hope that you'll consume it all and then they can come in later and say that they're mates with you? That's a very niche. It's a very <laughs> no, I niche just, question. I just, I just think, no, it's, un, it's, un, it's unregulated. It's an unregulated industry and it's one of the few where people are encouraged to get as fucked up as possible. Yeah, well, I, I actually... Um, I have been pissed for almost two years now, uh, which is, is kind of in response to that, the fact that you know, you're constantly surrounded by free alcohol and to a lesser extent, yeah, free drugs as well, um, depending on how you play it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Seen some yeah. pretty good disappearing acts in my time. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, look, you know, I'm, you, 
you never have to pretend to be someone's friend. Yeah. You know, if someone's willing to pay you thousands of dollars to go somewhere and do what you love, and then they're going to give you a bag of Coke as well, you know, that's someone I class as a friend, even if just for that night. That's fair enough. You? <laughs> no? no? No, no, it's not. It's not. People aren't big on um, and on hooking up regional journalists as much as you'd imagine. Unless, of course, they want something from us. Um, but, you know, we... we yeah, we... well, well uh, uh, unless it's at the Walkleys where uh, us sort of regional journalists have to uh, stick together at these big displays of force that this... Uh, that, that this country's sort of media industry needs to have. I remember when we were there last year, we got off at a few Crown Lagers from um, from the boys at News Corp at the after party, and then we had some youth orientated journalists, uh, some young fellas from um, a few publications that we probably can't legally say, but they um, did try to woo us into the uh, disabled toilet with a few other notable journalists. And while say, while uh, Ali was in there, yeah. In in the cubicle, yeah, he was in there, but he wasn't doing nothing. No, yeah. he was just there hanging yeah. out. It's like uh, the time that I was I was lured into the back room of a of a nightclub in the Cross by one of the security guards. He was like, "Come come have a bar," and uh, I went back there, and Mark Bosnich was just there, not doing anything, yeah, just there, you know. Yeah, I've very had Waleed esque. I've you know? had a very <laughs> very similar experience with Mark Bosnich. Um, oh really? Yeah, a long time ago, and it was in. Uh, Fitzrovia in London. He was um, he was out the front of a nightclub, all by himself, um, just smoking a cigar, just not doing anything, just staring off into space. Yeah, I feel like Bosnich likes his downtime. You know, yeah. It's because because keeping is one of those uh, one of those things in sport where you need to be able to switch your brain off to yeah. conserve that mental energy mm. before you switch it on again. Mm. Yeah, yeah. No, he's um. He's got work-life balance sorted, I imagine. <laughs> He's looking pretty yeah. good. Now, <laughs> Mr. Ride, can you tell us how the fuck you make a living? Uh, because, you know, since Napster, things have been a lot different for, uh, for recording artists. Where, where does the money come from? Where, how do you have the resources to spend six months full-time making an album? I'm going to answer this if you guys answer the exact same question. Okay. okay. You go first. I'll go first. <laughs> um, it's, money comes from a few different a few different streams these days. In music, um, for people, at, uh, you know, on a similar tier to me, a lot of it comes from playing shows and DJing and stuff like that. You know, royalties and APRA payments come uh, kind of quarterly normally, and that's a good little booster. You know, you'll have a good weekend when that comes in. But um, otherwise, keeping the lights on mainly is just live shows. Now you guys go. Well, from basically a mezzanine level, we do have our uh, our display advertising. Uh, that's that's not exactly a river of gold, but um, <laughs> there is you know there is always a little bit of water in that creek. The, the the rivers that do flow the heaviest, I would dare say, would be um, you know in extortion rings. We uh, we get paid a lot to write very. Dis- disparaging things about local politicians local businesses uh, we get paid to run uh, hate campaigns against uh, big transnational companies we, we run off the, the news court model where the highest bidder gets the, uh, the g- gets the gravy on their uh, on their mutton so it's kind guys. of cash for abusive comment um, you host parties around the country you make you make a fair bit of coin from your. I mean, I dare say a lot of our listeners, some might have even been in, in the regional, <coughs> sorry, in the metropolitan areas. A lot of the listeners might have been to one of your events. Do you want to tell us a little bit about them? Yeah. So, uh, one day Sundays is the name of the party, uh, and and the ethos is mainly you know just providing a, a fun space for people to be able to come and enjoy themselves without fear of uh, you know drama or, or yeah. thuggery. You know, uh, just a chance for people to come and, and hang out. In terms of making a lot of money off it, um, I wouldn't know. You know, I don't pay attention to the money that comes in off, off stuff like that because there's a there's a grander purpose to it, and I'm sure you guys can kind of relate to that. Exactly. You don't you don't really check the money that's coming in when uh, when there's more at stake. Mm-hmm. You know, such as uh, the the party culture of, of a country. Yeah, right. So you're kind of it's more like a noble thing you're doing you're oh definitely definitely yeah it's yeah. it's 
it sounds a lot like journalism where uh, where the biggest pay packet comes from knowing that you're keeping the fiber of society tighter. And yeah. that's that's something that no government can tax. No. That feeling. Not yet anyway. Not yet. Give them time. Yeah. I mean if they legalize drugs they definitely tax that feeling. Yeah, yeah, which which I welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, I think that not that there's too many drugs at these parties. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, but look, if they were legal, yeah. You know, uh, of course. What what would you prefer in terms of if, you know, you guys go to say a, an event, BNS ball, something? Yeah. Would you prefer the majority of the crowd there absolutely blind drunk or mm-hmm. everyone's just had half a dinger and they're really enjoying the, themselves, you know? Both is ideal. Well, that's <laughs> Yeah, well that's a bit of a loaded question. Yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah, you shouldn't you shouldn't have to pick. No. Is my point. Maybe people don't drink rum all day long and night is ideal. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Maybe ideal. Maybe get on the general. darker stuff at a certain hour. I think that people should be allowed to do what they want to a point where if it no longer becomes fun for other people, then you, you get locked up. So kind of like yep. libertarian to a point. Libertarian yep. but with heavy policing. Yeah, it's called... Um, <laughs> it's, uh, I believe the word is uh, Stalinism, I think. It's... Uh, <laughs> Don't say that because they'll start calling us communists again. Now, lockout laws. It's, it's speaking of keeping the fiber together in this country. Mm. You know, we do it um, through journalism. You do it through hosting parties, which you don't care about getting paid for. But down in Sydney, you have the hardest time. Yeah, it's pretty fucked. Yeah, basically, just they've, they've taken an axe to what was a pretty thriving nightlife, and. Uh, something once it's destroyed is quite hard to rebuild. You know, you think about, uh, say, your, your nephew's Lego house. You kick that over, that's another six hours of work for him to, yep. to rebuild it. And uh, that's effectively what they've done. They've kicked over this Lego house. Uh, the cross is now a ghost town, um, given that, you know, rumours banging around about how uh, development plans had already been drawn up before the lockouts had gone through, you know. It was all... You know, it just highlighted the fact that New South Wales government is uh, really kind of in bed with the, the developers. And um, Yeah, and I also heard from more than one person that um, the Premier down there at the time was on his knees for Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, it's not... Uh, at the Hillsong Church. Yeah. And, um, and particularly, too, with the Greyhound ban, I've heard uh, that a lot of the more metropolitan Greyhound venues were, uh, were earmarked for development by companies that were associated to uh, the Hillsong Church and Jesus Christ himself. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, the one, uh, <laughs> the one true Lord. Uh, <laughs> I, I'd heard that as well, actually. Yeah, uh, you know, and it, it all, it all just, it, it all stunk a little. It did. And, it would have um, stunk if they turned Wenny Park into a massive outdoor chapel. Oh. Now. Joyride, Mr. Ride, yeah. the state of Australian music. Once upon a time, they had Fancy Barnsey, Akadaka, uh, Hutchins, and the boys. Are there any current exports right now? Like that just come to mind? Are we have we got anything like that going? I mean, um, you know, who've climbed Kosciuszko and are now on Everest? <laughs> <laughs> There's all those bands from WA which have seen to have taken to global touring with a bit of uh with a bit of vigor are you like tame impala pond etc aren't they all the same person though yeah yeah bands? yeah 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 right yeah it's all just the one guy so which is a bit of a stitch up yeah so you know? it's pretty greedy um good avenue streams what's her name tess sultana mm-hmm. seems yeah. to be doing pretty well but the impression that i have is that her fan base is largely the type that might come to Australia and, and practice their uh, f- their flare cocktail stuff on the on the sands of Bondi yep. slacklining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that yeah. mould, you know. Right. Yeah. Um, so There's plenty of them in the world. A lot of comfortable white people. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, but is that really an audience? Yeah. Do they pay you for know? tickets? If your if your white fans have dreads, are they really fans? Yeah. Are they really people? Are they really people? You know, they, they were when Corn was around. Yeah. They were they were real <laughs> fans. But yeah, is there any re- like is there any kind of Household names like you know. Once upon a time, ACDC. If you kind of equate it to the current uh, musical Billboard, would be just as commonly thrown around as say 
Drake. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. maybe yeah. I mean, it's hard to think of the numbers have changed, and there's online, and there's all that to think about. Yeah, I think I think it's spread. It's spread out a lot more. You know, um, there were conventional channels that you'd get music through back in the day, and these days, if you consider yourself a music lover, you get it from from anywhere. Um, and because of that, there are more and more popular bands in different subgenres and, and niches around the globe. Um, and so while you, your cold plays and, and drakes, etc., will still exist, uh, there's less of a gap, I think, between that top kind of pop tier yeah. and, and what's happening underneath it. Yeah, so it's a long way from Taylor Swift to, uh, to Flinders Street Station, I guess, isn't it? You know? <laughs> Depends where she is at the time. <laughs> With those subgenres, having a long neck, <laughs> having a long yeah, neck, right? <laughs> watching Apex punch How? one with, with a bunch of Islanders. Or something. Uh, I'm I'm pro Apex. Can uh, I just say that for yeah. a second? How, how, what about you guys? Yeah. Well, you know what? We're going to include that grab with no context. Yeah. We're gonna, wait. We're going to can... go from a question about like about. Uh, lockout laws, and then you're just going to come in with I'm pro yeah. Apex. We can but give it. We can give it dead air on either side of it yeah. as well, so you can really get a grab of it. Yeah. Right. Okay. One, two. I'm pro Apex, by the way. There we go. Yeah, yeah. you can just chuck um, that anywhere. G- g- give us some more. Um, <laughs> are you pro Apex because you like the idea of a made up gang scaring everyone? Yeah. yeah. How good's that? It's like no one has to do any work. These idiots are scaring themselves, and meanwhile, you got the police commissioner of Victoria saying it doesn't exist. Peter, it doesn't exist. And he's gone, no, 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 it exists. And you should all be very, very afraid. So, like, we're saying gangs do exist in every city and, yeah, African gangs may exist in uh, Melbourne, but the idea of this highly organised <laughs> car stealing <Yeah. laughs> organisation of uh, 16-year-old war-weary African kids who operate in a similar system to... The Cosa Nostra <laughs> might yeah. not be as real as Peter Dutton thinks. I mean, and and if it were real, why wouldn't you appreciate their their go forward and acknowledge that these guys are, are pretty proactive and and able to get stuff done? And rather than attacking them and persecuting them, the, these people, that, these gangs that don't exist, you know, go all right. Well, maybe let's use your skills for good. Mm. You know, if you guys can can organise yourselves that well, yeah. You know, maybe they can indoctrinate them into becoming pretty staunch Liberal Party members. Well, sort of continuing on what the Liberal Party has been saying about them, you know, they could go and work at the um, NRMA or whatever it's called down there in it- in Victoria. Oh, the, uh, no, it's, it's the RACV. That they could go there and they could, you know, have their little car and they could... Yeah. Drive them around all day and and uh, help people get into their cars. Yeah, you got a baby <laughs> locked in a car. Call Apex. <laughs> now tell us about Warner. You're a cricket fan. Yeah, you play a lot of Bradman. <laughs> well, yeah. just for a bit of context, uh, in, in case you're not a cricket fan, um, uh, there was a bit of niggle between uh, David Warner and Quentin de Kock, which boiled over as they were walking into the dressing rooms, and it was all caught on camera. There was apparently a uh, Sydney grade cricket Facebook group, Sydney Test Cricket Facebook group, uh, that got shut down on Facebook years and years ago. And the thing that got it shut down, this is when Warner was still not getting picked for New South Wales because he was too much of an asshole, they reckon. And the thread that that, um, led to it being shut down was... uh, And I I only heard about this, I didn't see it myself, but it was, who's the biggest asshole in, in Sydney grade cricket? And it was overwhelmingly David Warner. But is, is he at fault here, you know? Yeah. Is he a product of his environment in uh, the landscape of post Allen Border Australian cricket where you go, you know what, I'm going to be a cunt. Mm. We're all yeah. going to be cunts and that's how we're going to win, you know? He's a product of, of that. And I think Australian cricket these days, you, you have to be an absolute fuckhead to play for Australia. Yeah. You know, people talk about, oh, Gary Lyon, you know, Nathan Lyon is, is a nice guy, all this. From all reports, he's an absolute weirdo. Yeah. You know? No. Um, and, and then Australians have the hide to attack someone like Virat Kohli, who's seen the success of uh, Alan Bordernomics and decided to try it for himself. And then Australia cries foul 
Going, oh, Barrett Cole is a dickhead. Mm. It's like, well, look at David Warner. Yeah. Yeah. And actually look at the people that are publicly calling him a cunt on social media, yeah. probably where you can see it. <laughs> yeah. Who are, well, someone yeah. can play with him. Yeah. Everyone's a cunt. Yeah. Like, well, nice guys... Nice guys aren't good at cricket. Ever since the border era, though, that there has been the position of chief cunt in the Australian cricket team. I mean, you, you know, there was Alan Border himself, and then you move into to the war era. Yeah. And there was a whole smorgasbord of cunts that came through that team. Yeah, that and, 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 yeah, look at yeah. how much they won, you know. Yeah. Warren, uh, Steve War, of course, unbelievable cunt. Yeah. Uh, McGrath. Known cunt, but you know, yeah. but um, Clark Clark a bigger cunt I think than yeah. than Ponting. Ponting was a respected hard nut. Yeah, you know he someone was... whose knowledge of the game was was unmatched, and yeah. everyone respected his skill. And by then, everyone had gotten used to I think the kind of playing style that uh, that he'd adopted from generations past. Yeah. Pup brought in a new level of cunt. Mm. Yeah, you know the. Uh, Hurry up and sing the team song. I've got a dinner date. Yeah, type cunt. You know. Yeah. What do you guys think of him as a commentator? Oh, uh, you know, he's 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 a bit around the wicket, you know. But it, I think that uh, that Andrew Simons has finally got his uh, revenge back on Pup because he's a much better commentator on the BBL. You know, he's, uh, you know, I would rather spend a day in a tinny with Andrew Simons as opposed to uh, Michael the Pup Clark. A day shopping for Bentleys with Pup. Yeah. Yeah. He sounds like a PE teacher on prac. Yeah, he does. And then also it's a bit contrived. Like just because you're a great player doesn't mean you're a great personality. Joey Johns. Joey Johns. I mean, Joey knows how to use that screen <laughs> on, on Origin time. Imagine, imagine those, the, the lessons with Channel 9 production. Now, Joey, mate, what, no, 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 you're doing it wrong. A little lower. <laughs> He's, Joey's a great example of having so much talent that you don't actually have to know the ins and outs of the game. Yeah. It just flows through you. you yeah, know? Well, it's instinctively. Yeah, yeah. He's a they, freak. They say the best coaches aren't, weren't necessarily the best players because uh, they were kind of mid-tier players who had to work hard to get there. Yeah. So they know the game a, a bit better. Yeah. Warney, Warney, though, is one of those freaks... Yeah. And and knows the game like he's, yeah, he's yeah. an encyclopedia, but he's only but it's probably because he only knows about cricket. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and pizza yeah. and golf, and Melbourne. Yeah, and rooting. Yeah, he, he and hit texting. a hole in one poker at Augusta yeah. the other day yeah, on the sixteenth. What a cunt! Right? What, what, what a, a fucking cunt. cunt! How like what's it going to take to knock Warney off the perch? Like for scandal wise? Yeah, I don't know. He's he he's, Warney would survive a bubbler. Oh, easily, yeah, easily. Yeah. But would he survive like a theatre assault? <laughs> yeah, like a like a <laughs> like a spacey type thing. I mean, I don't think Warney puts himself in those environments. No. Honestly, I think he's. I don't think he's that calculated. But he's also crafted a personality for himself. That yeah. Any DMs he sends, if if a screenshot started floating around, no one would be shocked. No. Yeah. You know the bar. He's he's managed to have the bar set so low for him. Yeah. Which is incredible. And I think it's something we should all, all aspire to. I think the only thing that could probably take him down is if he went mad and the cop shot him. Well, that's... Yeah, that, that's what's going to have to happen because what we have... Cops is are going to have to shoot Warney. <laughs> <laughs> and even then he might not die. Yeah. Like and he, that cop that shoots Warney will just be the target of a social media hate campaign yeah, yeah, yeah. for the rest of his life. The, new, the new Coney... He better delete yeah. his cop Instagram. Oh. <laughs> Cops have to have fake names on Facebook, eh? Yeah, I imagine teachers do. Yeah, God, just everyone should just delete their Facebooks. Yeah, unless they want to read Batuta Advocate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Keep your Facebook. Read Batuta. Or they want to listen to Joyride's uh, "Like a Version" cover, which we're now going to talk about. Oh, cool, mate. That was good. I was a big fan of it. Loved it. Thank you. What is the process? Because that is the zenith of being an Australian musician is being asked to do like a version. Yeah. And I know every single musician talks about what they're going to do all the time. How did you get to Kelly Clarkson? Which you nailed, by the way. Oh, thank you. Like a version can be uh, like lambs to the slaughter. You know, there's a very um, unforgiving audience who uh, sometimes can be quite uneducated musically as well, but really willing to give an opinion. 
you've got to, you know, I know a lot of people try and please that mob, but it's, it's, yeah. it's pointless. You're never going to make everyone happy, and that shouldn't be your intent. Your intent should be to, uh, you know, make yourself happy. The, the trick is, I reckon, you take a song that everyone knows by an artist no one gives a fuck about. And so that was kind of the... So the you, wouldn't, you wouldn't cover Bruce... No, no. Or um, like Hotel California or... Uh, no, no. Or, Other um, signs did Metallica. Who would have thought Metallica fans were still paying attention to Triple J, but it turns out they were. And they weren't happy? Yeah. And, and it's funny because ironically, that's actually one of the best ones I think that's ever been done. Right. Yeah. Uh, Enter Sandman. Two solos in it. Really? Yeah, they went for it. It was great. <laughs> Which you cover? Um, so, what about Nirvana? It smells like teen spirit. Do you reckon excellent. anyone can do that? That was when, uh, so the meeting tree had, were in discussions with Triple J about doing like a version and they hated the idea that we sent back we wanted to do Chet Faker. And they weren't into it. Yeah. And we kind of pushed a bit with that and then um, after they, we, we came up with the idea after they'd stopped responding to our emails but it was, we should just do Smells Like Team Spirit, Team Spirit, Raph on drums. He's never sat behind a drum kit in his life and me on guitar. Just like year ten high school band style performance, yeah, hair going everywhere in the talent show, in the talent show, yeah, and, just, yeah, yeah. and really blaze of glory, it, you know. And I didn't even really want to do since you've been gone, to be honest with you. What did you want to do? I want to do Lighthouse Family High. That's that's a track. That's a track. Will you give us a little bit of what you would have done, like just now, a cappella? <laughs> How much cash you got on you? Just from one day. <laughs> Well, that's, that's the thing. It's like it writes itself, you know, one day we're yeah. going to get so high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes perfect sense. It's about you. Yeah. And your people. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever been in a freestyle battle? <laughs> Not an official one. No. no like, but, uh, like a kick on one. Yeah. Or like, you know, DJing for, for Spit Syndicate, Sydney Rap Group. And they'd be, you know, all right, we're going to freestyle in this bit. And then one of them would start kind of just paying me out and so I'd just start paying them out but in front of you know 1500 people at the Tivoli supporting Cypress Hill oh sick you know there's a hostile crowd if I've ever seen one yeah 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 what's the Cypress crowd like in Brisbane I mean the Cypress Hill crowds uh, everywhere we went they were they were pretty chill Be Real the the one with yeah. the the whiny voice Be Real yeah he um on that tour we did with him he, he made a habit of, like, just staring at me sometimes. Right. But, like, it would be middle of their set. We're standing side of stage. And he'd just stop and t- crane his neck around and just stare at me. And I was like, what the fuck's going on here? Anyway, a couple of weeks later, uh, there was a DJ from L.A. who was out here that I was spending a bit of time with. And I told him about it. And he goes, yeah, Be Real practices Santeria. He's into, like... Uh, sacrificing chickens and shit Right And um, he figured it must be something to do with that I was giving off an energy that he was drawn to Do you reckon they've smoked Like a bit A bit of weed Cypress Hill Yeah I reckon they've dabbled I reckon they have Like god damn it's, it's, it's hard to be able to say What they'd be like otherwise Would they be the same Would they be better Would they be worse Who knows Maybe the the best version of them is ripped. Yeah, you know maybe. And they would have been ripped for like ninety percent of the last two decades. Yeah, easily. Wow. If we can just put the bong down for a second, Mister Ride. What else is uh, is going on in your immediate future? You've got an album t- that's nearly, nearly done. Nearly done. Sunrise yep. Chaser is the name of the album. Had a couple of songs out recently. Yeah, three three singles are now in the world from that. Um, so you can check them out on Spotify or YouTube or whatever. Film clip for the latest single, Blue Batmans, is coming out soon. Uh, but, yeah, just trying to finish the album off and then get into some shows. Um, in the meantime, doing uh, Meeting Tree Radio, which is a podcast of my own. Mm-hmm. Like, subscribe. Five uh, stars. Five stars, the rest of it. Here's some good chat about uh, giving voodoo dolls rim jobs. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll definitely have to download that podcast. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Give that a listen uh, on the drive home this afternoon. So, from, it's, uh, so it's up your alley. Speaking of going home, actually, I think that's going to be all we have time for today. 
Uh, thanks again for joining us, Mr. Wright. It's been great hearing your perspective on life uh, down down in the steak and kidney and uh, in the particular industry that you work in. Uh, it's been great having you. Until next time, listeners, like and subscribe, five-star reviews. Same goes for Meeting Tree. Great listeners are great learners, right? Well, hear this. Zookal has the cheapest textbooks with up to 70% off. You can even rent them. With a lowest price guarantee and free delivery for orders over 50 bucks, the only question is, what are you waiting for? Apart from the end of your podcast. From Shakespeare to marketing to essay writing to video production and everything in between, check out Zookal. Use the code Podcast for five bucks off. Zookal.com.au